Welcome to another episode here with Queen City Reefs and more. Today's a very special video. It is our first club tank tour. That club being Ray Sock. Every single tank that we visited for some of the members of the RA Sock group is a total of five, mine included in this one. And then there's one coming up soon that we will be visiting a different area of the of the Charlotte area. If this video is something you like to see and you like to see other people's tanks, if you like this video and you li would like for me to continue covering the tank tours, please make sure you hit that like button. Please make sure you leave a comment below. Let me know that you want me to continue this series. And don't forget that if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. There's a lot more coming on this channel. I really appreciate everyone that continues to be subscribed. This channel is growing. It is becoming the best channel in the Carolinas, and that's all thanks to y'all. All right, let's get to our first tank tour. Here you have the first tank tour. This is at Andrea's house. This is a 65 gallon, roughly about 36 inches in length, 18 inches in depth, and 24 inches high. It's been running for about a year and a month. It is her first tank, so it's actually quite amazing to see this. I know that the fish are going to outcompete them for the food, right. so that they get they get about. first dibs, and then the seahorses kind of graze what hits the, the fan and awesome. um, what hits the sand, and and then there's a very hefty cleanup crew in there. Oh, is there? So there's a fighting conch, there's a diamond goby, there's the a sand goby. sifter oh. Oh. star oh, in there. Is, yeah, lots yeah, of snails. So. Yeah. Cool. How long has your tank been set up? Um, almost a year and a half. And how big is this tank? This is a 60 on the top, and then there's a, I think, 15 gallon down here. So. And you don't have any issues with the Halameda or anything going crazy in here? That so that's my first one, and it's not growing. <laughs> Mostly because. This um, planted macro oh, back okay. here, it's not growing. I think the um, I think the crabs are eating it, okay. and which is fine. Yeah. I mean, you know, I just kind of put things in there to see how it how it does. I just noticed that your seahorses like to latch on to. Yes, it. yeah. So I had a lot of, actually of that halameda at the at the beginning. That's probably about a half to three quarters of what it was, but. I, I went through a, well, okay, let's see if I can grow macros because my tank is feeding tons of nutrients into it, obviously, because of overfeeding, but at the same time, um, I can't keep, I can't keep the levels like the nitrates and phosphates thriving. So, um, I mean, your tank looks great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I haven't cleaned it. And, I think two weeks. This is just a simple. No, like, you never glass. I did the glass yesterday, and I'm gonna say it. my glass is every other day. Yeah, <laughs> I did the glass yeah. yesterday, yeah. but um, you know the starfish are always on the glass, and um, so this thing I truly this think this that this is these. my difference maker right here. So this is a charcoal chamber that's carrying aqua char in it, and oh, more yeah. aqua char. Yeah, and um, so this was made by Robert King. He um, owns Zombie Clownfish. I don't know if you're familiar with uh -uh. him and the groups, but essentially he took the Aquachar product and put it in a in a chamber, an air chamber, and it just runs an airline. That's all it has in terms of mechanics. <laughs> and first, the charcoal kind of well, it's it's Aquachar. It's not real charcoal, you know. It's not, um, but. Um, it, it sucks all those nutrients up and just builds its own biological filtration there. So, I mean, since I put it in, my water's clean. I barely get anything on the glass. Like, it's been incredible. Let me go let in. Now, do you run a UV or no? I don't. I would love to. That's a venture that I plan to make when I upgrade the tank. They're expensive. 
I'll be right How beautiful is that? That's amazing. So she has four Southern Erectus seahorses, two Northern Erectus, uh, let's see, two Diamond Gobies, one Royal Grandma, one Six Lion Wrasse, two Oslurus Clownfish, one Linkia, one Promia, one Sand Sifting Starfish, one Fighting Conch, and Miscellaneous Crabs and Snails. So, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but this is a truly beautiful and unique reef tank. Look at these seahorses just going after the food. It's amazing. Welcome to the second home. This home here is Michael's. What you're seeing right now is one of his two tanks. This is his Nano Water Box 20. Uh, and as you can see, uh, he has a little stripey in there, which I don't know how he was able to get because I've been looking for one for so long. Luckily, I was able to find a banner fish that did not eat my coral and is taking care of all the aptasia. So for now, I guess I don't need one, but just take a look at this tank. Absolutely beautiful. This is a Cade S2-1500. This is an Australian company. I don't know about you, but something about this tank really kept, calls my attention. The build quality is amazing. I love the, the clear silicone on the side. You know, it's something about that that makes the tank look cleaner to me. I, I'm not saying I, I'm against black silicone. That's all the tanks I have now, but I truly do like the uniqueness of this one. And another thing I like is that they use a white bottom so it, you're almost able to go sandless bare bottom here because you will still get that brightness from the white bottom of this tank So this Cade measures 59 inches in length, 
27.5 in width and 23.6 in height. It is a display volume of 143 gallons. Uh, looks like a sump volume of 26.4 and ATO capacity of 12 gallons, which makes it a total capacity of 181.4 gallons. Going in here, or? yep. <laughs> if anybody wants some, yeah, you've been collecting those Swedish fish, haven't you? <laughs> oh, from Algae Barn, yeah, the little packets, yeah, yeah. you should have brought up the goldfish and the sardines. I know. So, would anybody like a little pack of goldfish or Swedish fish? So I moved the man chair out. Here, you know, I don't think I have a whole separated out. Anybody want? I'll do a roll fishing. Okay. I moved the man chair out so you can get all the way around the tank with these. Okay. Make yourself. Why do you have it here where you can see both your tanks? <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> actually, my actually my spot. My spot is right here. Mm. Look at Jeff, ready for a presentation to show off his tanks. He also had papers that showed all the fish that inhabitants that he had in the tanks and the gear that he used. Um, as you can see, this is definitely another amazing tank. This is a Planet Aquarium 210 gallon. Uh, and I'll be honest, I don't remember the size of the next tank you'll see here in a few after this one. But I do have a video where I did a tank tour at his home and we talk about all the details. The only difference that there is between now and then is that he had to modify his trigger sump system because the filter roller was not working adequately and was very hard to do maintenance on. So he decided to go ahead and take it out. He tried dealing with customer service. You know, uh, he definitely can tell you the whole story in the comments below if you want to hear it. Uh, but he went ahead and changed over to the popular Red Sea mat, uh, which is a favorite of mine as well. And so far, so good. you but I never thought of seeing a shipwreck like this in a saltwater tank you know never 
I've always thought of just live rock, and I know maybe this is not everyone everyone's cup of tea, but I can tell you for sure that in person and even here on camera, I don't see how you can deny how Jeff was able to pull this off and how unique and beautiful this tank is, you know, and, and every fish and every coral in there as, he as healthy as can be. Uh, one unique thing about this tank is that he actually runs a canister filter on this one and he also runs a Seachem Tidal hang on the back filter, which is pretty unique and you know, it seems to work for him. He, he definitely knows what he's doing. Again, check out one of my previous videos where I actually discussed this tank and the other tank on that video and we go into a lot of details. So if you're interested, definitely check that out. Have it the one and only Queen City Reefs tank. This is the very famous Mega Matrix from Planet Aquariums, uh, 310 gallon. For those that have not seen this tank before, definitely check out previous videos to where you can get a lot more detail of this tank. This tank at some point was actually a SPS dominant tank, or mainly only SPS. I actually had a Peninsula that I would keep all my LPS in to dedicate it to just LPS, but due to time constraints and due to issues and everything else that I'd rather not go over here, I ended up tearing the tank down, moving all the LPS over to this tank and decided to sell that Peninsula tank and made the Peninsula room a an office, which is where I'm actually recording this voiceover right now. Uh, so this is now what you would consider a mixed reef full of SPS and LPS um, Some of my favorite corals in here and this is where if I if you see posts on Facebook of me selling corals This is where all the corals come out from so as you can see they're all nice plump and healthy especially the Ghanis E260 Max all-in-one aquarium so this is not the sump version this is the version that has the sump in the back 
nothing against these type of tanks but honestly I now I regret it and I wish I would have uh, gotten the one that had the sump in the bottom just because you were able to add your own gear uh, you're able to add media reactors or whatever the case is without having to build your own thing on the side or I don't know I don't see I don't know how people do it I'm not that great at uh, you know DIY so but it works it's been working it's been doing fine it's an easy tank I decided to make it in an enemy tank it, there you know including Aptasia yes I know you see all that Aptasia but like I said this is an enemy tank and we don't discriminate any of the anemones uh, but at some point they'll come out this is my quarantine tank this is all the corals that you see on there from the reefing USA show that just happened that coral is laying against the wall there because I use SeaTac and I'm guessing I didn't use enough of it uh, I'm not convinced yet but I did talk to someone who will uh, send me a new one and we're gonna try to try again pretty much these tanks right here this is a 28 gallon tank You'll see a blue jawfish in there. I don't recommend you keep one if you don't plan on keeping your tank at less than 76 degrees. That fish right there suffered in my LPS tank. He was on his way out and I decided to move him to this tank. I don't have a heater in that tank. So that tank remains cold. This right here is my mangrove tank, my only fresh water tank in this house. Actually, I'm lying, my daughter has a beta tank. But this is my mangrove tank that actually she takes care of. She feeds these fish, she cleans the glass. I didn't do that great of a job for this demonstration here, but hey, I'm keeping it real. This is how this tank looks most of the time. Uh, so we have three mangroves. I actually had four before, one died, I don't know why. Uh, but, you know, it's still running, the mangroves are growing. I don't know if I want to continue keeping this tank. Uh, I am definitely trying to reduce the load of maintenance that I have in this house, but for now it'll stay there. You'll see my only peep up for that's left, um, but definitely doing great. to see the equipment so I do still run the calc reactor I run still the co2 scrubber I have been getting 8.4 8.5 pH on these when I, it's fresh calc washer uh, so um, definitely want to keep it going uh, I do still uh, run filter socks and at some point I want to see if someone can help me DIY a way to put two of the Red Sea Mat 1200 instead this right here is a Red Sea Octo 250 internal or external, and I'm not sure, but that's the one with the pump out. It's so much easier to clean when it's that way. So if you have the room, I recommend external pumps. And that is a Ecotech Vectra L1, the largest one. That right there is a Trident. This is where I've been keeping it. It's been doing great. I've had to have it serviced once in the last two and a half years or maybe two years. And that is it. bad with names but this was the last tour that we had for the day uh, this here uh, the way that they were presenting this tank especially from this entrance was very very cool I really like the setup with uh, plants on the side and everything I mean it, it looked very very nice I know that that Jeff was already measuring uh, how to get a tank all the way in there and use all that space for a bigger tank uh, her husband was not looking too happy about that but you know, maybe one day we'll see a bigger tank in there but this one so far was a very nice one well placed there i, I think honestly it looks great it's very cool how you meet can, people are and well, putting these type of tanks the together to their own liking um excuse me let me go somewhere scooter of course is named hey, scooter hey, scooter um cruella ah. <laughs> i did name cruella Here's Achman. 
and um, Scotty is. Where's the name from? Achman. Sounds familiar. Larry. Why is he named Achman? That's the ugliest fish I ever saw. No, that's not why you named but him Achman. Jeff Dunham's got that. Oh, yeah. Jeff Dunham. Uh, the dead uh, hair. Yeah, His Jeff face Dunham. is like that dead hair. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, I was, I was telling you the feeding thing that I. Oh, I didn't open huh? up that part. There's the sun. <laughs> Larry, you can tell them the story of the stand. Oh, come on. You tell it so much better than I do. This stand was like almost a year in the making. Because... Re well, no, making first. So, I found somebody on next door that was recommended. Oh, yes. He'll do a great job. And so, anyway, he, he, well, he presented well at the first meeting, you know. And we told him what we wanted. Six feet long because we wanted extra storage. Now, anybody can pull out a tape measure. See, this is not six feet long. Oh, this and is supposed to be six feet long? It was supposed long. to be six feet long. Because it was... as wide as the window. Yeah, it was supposed to be as wide as the window because I was going to have some extra storage under it. And, and you can look. I don't have anything rustic in here. When we got it back, it was extremely rustic. And the top, and he knew what it was for. It was all these uneven boards on top uh, two by six two by sixes and uneven and i looked at it and i had also said i wanted cherry it was not cherry i would take cherry dark ma mahogany dark cherry whatever and no wasn't anything like and it was only 48 inches long so we paid him eight hundred dollars for that and then it sat outside while we decided what to do, and one day he tore it apart. <laughs> well, I was going to replace the top anyway. Yeah. That's why I tore the top off of it. I wasn't going to have all the big gaps in the top. Because it burned so But then he started looking at it. <laughs> and what a short, all the short cuts he'd taken and everything. Some of the boards, the ones that were, should be supporting the weight, weren't even all the way down. Oh. And they were just, they were shimmed with yeah. something. Didn't have any braces going front to back. This is actually just salt water. So no, that's the tenacore from Reef to Reef when the tenacore did their three gallon frag in the sump for uh, like next to nothing. They still make it? Oh, yeah, they make it. It's on their website. I think it's like 200 for the whole thing. But if you want to know what I got it for. Oh, oh well, you're not going to sell it to me for that price then. <laughs> no, but they were, it was a DIY thing. Oh, okay. So I had to learn acrylic. Uh, which I, it's now that's so on because I did not learn my acrylic really well. I tried, I didn't. Yeah, yeah etching, put I had name it all put it. together. See where that piece is there, it actually is laser etched. Oh. And under it is laser etched and said Tenacore, and it leaked from there. Yeah. There, They had a new, you know what? They went that? too deep. I yeah, just I put that there because the it's all. The turned out too high. Yeah, they went too deep. <laughs> so they're building up they and just start going drip, drip. I'm like, yeah. that's coming out of the letters. And since I did this, that little piece of Kenya tree, yeah. is what I was telling you was, it was like next to dead. And then the hermit crab clipped it off and I had to fish it out of Scotty's lair. And it was like, this is little nothing. And then just in the last two or three days, it did that. What are you using for the light on top? This it's is one, fluval. I just got a fluval something or other. Okay. And Yeah, I think a fluval is another one. Yes, yeah, yes, fluval. that. that. Only there. Nobody else. Really? I bought. I got it. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, no, yeah, no, 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 him. Him. Yeah, that's an engineer Gobi. That's an engineer Gobi. Yeah, they look just like yours. I've never seen one anywhere near that size. Yeah, they grow big. I've never seen one that big either. Holy crap! Is that the one we were looking for? No. She knows the actual name of it. I didn't know Jawfish got that big. <laughs> I didn't know Engineer Gobi's got anywhere near that big. Make it like a foot. Alright, if you watched up to this point, you're definitely, you're definitely a Queen City Reefs uh, fan, and I appreciate that. Now, if you haven't subscribed, please make sure to subscribe. If you don't have an account for YouTube, make this the reason to create one. Subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment below. Let me know which tank you thought was the coolest and the most unique. And I will catch you all on the next one.